So this is a more of a description video than anything else. I just wanted to show how all of the components of this come together, what the various pieces are, and explain a bit about how they work. Just thought it might be interesting for some people. So we start off with the Variac, which is basically an AC auto transformer. It takes the mains in, and then I get to vary it from zero, and this one puts out about 260 volts at maximum. They don't provide isolation, but they are very handy if you want to have varying different voltages. And that is going into a microwave oven transformer, which uh, normally puts out about 2100 volts. And then we have a doubler arrangement here, using the diodes out of two transform uh, microwave ovens and two capacitors, which are matched as close as I could for voltage and uh, capacity. And basically, the ends of the diodes they are each in opposition, so one of them is one way around, the other is the other way around, and they are fed off one side of the high voltage output, and each one goes to the outside of the two capacitors, so that's where the two voltages, when it's all negative it goes to this one, when it's all positive it goes to that one, and then the center of the two capacitors is joined together onto the other side of the secondary output. So that provides a center point for it, and then, as I say, so you basically end up with DC across these capacitors, which is double the voltage that's coming out. So total, now it's not, it's, sorry, more than double, because this is AC, so that 2100 volts is AC, and these DC, so you have to multiply by uh, 1.414, roughly, to get the DC voltage, and then that is what's doubled. So you end up I think it was about 6500 volts I could put across here, which would vastly exceed what they're actually rated for, so the most I've done is about 4,500, 5,000 volts. And then the output of those goes to my main capacitor bank, which is these bad boys. So the smallest of those is rated for 4,800 volts DC, and the largest about 5,200. Uh, so I'm topping them out at about 4,500 because I don't want to blow them up. There is uh, around 1300 joules, I think, there were 119 microfarads. I'll put up a comment with the, the actual values. Um, so yeah, if they did uh, fail, that would be quite catastrophic and probably quite exciting. Not something I want to experience. This is the, the spark side of the triggered spark gap. So basically one side of the output from the capacitors goes onto here. I also have uh, so the input I've put onto there as well, because that was just a nice handy point for the alligator clip to go. There's not a huge amount of current going through this bit. This one takes a lot, but only for very, very short periods of time. I think the arc that I've measured was around 4 microseconds long. Um, and then this is the negative for my voltage probe, so that I can tell how much is in the caps. And I'll show you the wiring of the other, this is the other side of this. And then the output from here goes from there onto my alligator clips and whatever I'm going to zap. The other side of which is connected straight to, in this case, the positive side. So I'm switching the negative side. And that has also got, you can just see the tip of my high voltage probe. So the other side of this basically comes from the little feeder, and I'll go through that in a second. There's a couple of high voltage capacitors, and you can see the, uh, the flux capacitor arrangement. And basically, there is a high voltage spark generated from this thing which puts a pulse into here through the caps connected to the bottom of here which is connected to this I'll call it electrode here which is at the moment is just floating on this side so there's nothing from here connected on there and that has got a, basically a voltage divider here across to these two points which are the two points that are connected into my switch into the circuit there and what happens is when the pulse comes in here because these have got the dividers and this has got the raw pulse there becomes a voltage difference between this bottom bar and these two bars one of which is also connected to my capacitors and then when you get this adjusted right there will be an arc a very small low current arc forms from here to in my case it was going on to this negative terminal, and because an arc has much less resistance than air, once that forms, it means that the main power from here now has a much lower resistance path through to here. And it does require quite a bit of fine tuning because you need to get it to the point where it doesn't spontaneously arc across, 
because then it'll just go off when you get to a certain voltage um, but also isn't so large a gap which I found that this is at the moment that it leaves a lot of voltage in the caps because the arc breaks down before all of the power has managed to go through. So in my case I'm actually only getting about half of the power out of these at this point with it tuned like that. And that's one thing I don't like about this arrangement. It's, um, it's pretty good when you've got it all set up uh, but it is a bit finicky when you start to start changing voltages so when I was playing with only 2000 volts I had it a lot closer and it was fine but I found that when I put up to 4000 it was going off on its own. Uh, which you do not want. You want to have control over when this sort of thing goes off. So that brings us to the Spark generator and it's pretty tiny. I think we'll get some more light on that. Okay so in here we have 240 volts from the mains which goes through a small full wave rectifier. That's four little diodes there and on the other side we've got a pretty chunky resistor that just uh, slows down the current so that when you turn it on it doesn't blow your fuse trying to charge up these two caps. So they're the main two tank caps for the, the pulse itself. And then around on this side we have uh, 9 volts going into here and then this is a, an optocoupler which is just basically an LED on this side, that's the current limiting resistor for the LED. This is a, an SCR, it's a BT151 silicon controlled relay, uh, which is good for about 600 volts, and it's switching the output from these two capacitors via this device, which essentially is one side of the mains comes into here and is switched by the, the optocoupler to the gate of the SCR, which discharges the caps through this little fella which is a pulse generator. It's basically just two coils and then we've got a top connection here which is connected and the bottom connection there which is just left floating and then it's this top connection which goes onto the flux capacitor. I, I was using this white alligator clip wire because it's again very low current but high voltage. Uh, the guy I borrowed it off said it's about 25,000 volts so it should be able to jump a gap of about well close to a centimetre anyway without too much trouble and uh, that's what generates the pulse that triggers the gap. And on the measuring side here nestled in between there is my high voltage probe. It's uh, quite an old one, it's uh, supposedly good for 30,000 volts. Um, designed so that you can actually supposedly touch it and it's got a sharp point like a normal oscilloscope probe and the other end plugs into your multimeter and yeah it should be insulated to, to 30,000 volts to be safe but uh, I will not touch it at all when there's live, live voltage across it, I don't trust it but uh, it's good for, for measuring, it's unfortunately not designed for my multimeter so it means that the, the ratio is a bit off but through trial and error I found it's about 64 to 1 so I just uh, multiply whatever the fluke says by 64 and that's whatever voltage there is across my caps you see I've got, uh, because the fluke is floating with whatever voltage is in here, I've got it sitting on its little table here and insulated from the main bench and I've also got all of the high voltage, the caps and the spark gap and everything sitting on this nice chunky nylon board just to add an extra layer of insulation from the wood of the desk itself just, just to be safe.